No issue is more hotly contested today than immigration, with restrictionists calling for the deportation of all illegals and a 50% cut in legal immigration. Here are the five strongest arguments against immigration and why they're wrong. So with immigration, you better be smart and you better be tough and they're taking your jobs and you better be careful. So which is it, President Trump? Do we have record low unemployment or are immigrants stealing all the jobs? The worst case estimates are that low skill immigrants reduce the wages of high school dropouts by less than 5%. That's not nothing, but immigrants make things cheaper for all Americans by doing jobs such as picking fruit or cleaning up on construction sites. The money saved can be devoted to other productive uses, which also creates jobs. In the developed world, there is no correlation between unemployment and immigration rates. Immigrants go to hot economies and they leave when the jobs dry up. Why would you want to bring people who are immediately dependent on welfare when they get here? Don't you want people who add something immediately to your country? Since the late 90s, most legal immigrants and all illegals are barred from receiving most forms of welfare. The only real taxpayer-funded services most immigrants use are emergency medical treatments that account for less than 2% of all healthcare spending and K-12 education for their children who are often U.S. citizens. Immigrants who do qualify for programs such as Medicaid, food stamps, or supplemental social security use these programs at lower rates than native-born Americans or naturalized citizens. Legal immigrant men also have a higher labor force participation rate than natives, and illegals are even more likely to be working than legal immigrants. They're here illegally. They're not paying taxes, okay? I've heard this one before, too. I hear them all. Legal immigrants pay the exact same taxes as all Americans. Illegals pay the same sales and property taxes, and between half and two-thirds also end up paying payroll and income taxes because they use fake Social Security cards and other documents to get hired. And if we want unauthorized immigrants to contribute more in taxes, the best way to accomplish that is to change their legal status. What I would suggest they do is that they go back to their home country, get in line with the hundreds of thousands of people from their home country who are trying to do it legally. For many immigrants, especially from Mexico, there really is no line. In 2010, for instance, just 65,000 visas were given to Mexicans, with the overwhelming majority going to close family members such as spouses and minor children. The wait list had 1.4 million people on it, effectively meaning there is no chance of ever getting in. Long wait lists also exist for the Philippines, China, India, and other countries. And for all the fear of what restrictionists call chain migration, family reunification consists almost exclusively of U.S. citizens bringing their spouses and unmarried minor children to live here. The backlogs for most countries means that this can take between 15 and 25 years. If you start to bring your sister over when she's 25, you'll be lucky to welcome her by the time she turns 40. You should not import people numerous enough to influence your society change its laws, and destroy your culture. Exactly the same complaints were made about newcomers like the Irish, the Jews, and the Italians. Yet about one-third of Mexican immigrants marry outside their ethnicity or race, which is the same percentage as it was a quarter century ago. Successive generations also see massive gains in household income and home ownership rates. In this video, te voy a mostrar el acento gringo. And when it comes to learning English, all signs are that Hispanics are more likely to speak English at home than in years past. By the third generation, English is the dominant language in three quarters of Hispanic homes, which is the same rate of language shift seen in earlier waves of immigration. The bottom line is that when it comes to immigration, the instincts of the American people are correct. Immigrants help the economy, and newcomers make the land of opportunity a better place to live.